Ziggurat Labs here. Today we're going to be doing a teardown of the Toshiba Libretto 110CT. This is a follow-up video for the review that I did for this particular model. Uh, I plan to explain the different, uh, I want to say, the um, onboard devices such as the CPU, the chipset, where, where everything lies as far as the sound card, the video card, and a, a few other components on the motherboard and on this device. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is of course remove the battery so it does not have any power to supply it. And I'm going to flip it over here. There's actually a little a couple little screws here that are actually holding it in. The little keyboard in here. Um, but if you remove this just ever so gently, you can get to that. So I've already removed the screw, but it usually lies right there. And so just to show you what it looks like inside. So this right here is the, this is Viking Components. That is actually the Protégé memory card that I have modified to fit in this libretto. Um, as soon as I take the keyboard off, you'll have a better uh, view of that. And then we have the grounds right here as well, which I'll need to undo. I just want to show you what it looks like. So I had to actually cut right here to get this thing to fit. And there's actually some more uh, Dremel uh, stuff that I've done right here. Also, the CMOS battery, there's actually a little uh, connector here that I actually had to resolder the wires to. It's actually on the other side of the board, uh, which we'll see. On the back side, uh, there's a couple screws. We'll go ahead and remove those. And first thing we're going to do is actually remove the hard drive. Uh, so the hard drive on this particular model and the Librettos are actually very easy to get to. Um, as mentioned in my other previous video, I plan to do a review on the Sony that I also have and getting to the hard drive on that Sony is taking the whole thing apart just to even get to the hard drive. On the librettos it's actually quite easy. There's a little flap here and then the hard drive pops out. Now it's featured in the other video. Here is the compact flash that I am using um, with a little adapter. I think I bought this on Amazon and actually it has two slots for two different um, CF cards if you wanted to use it. However, on the librettos, it will not recognize that secondary card for the slave. It only recognizes the master. And these screws are pretty long. What's nice about the Toshibas, they all use pretty much the same screws. You don't have different types of sizes. Uh, like some other models where they'll have short ones, D, you know, D5s and D16s is what they refer to them as. So it's actually quite nice that Toshiba has done that. Okay, so now the screws are out. Let's go ahead and open up the key this thing again, take the keyboard out. Hopefully the keyboard will now come out easily. Yes, it does. So there's your keyboard. View. So you do have a few other screws that we have to get to. You have, uh, I think there's three. One, oh, actually, there's, yeah, there's three. One, two, three. So what I like to do is organize my screws. So I'm going to put them over here the way I took it apart. down that a little bit. Okay. What I like to do is just kind of easy make the screw drop out just like that. You notice the screws show you in the camera they're all roughly the same size even though they're different colors they're actually all the same size. We'll go ahead and put those there. 
Next you want to start kind of disconnecting lightly. Uh, this is for the display. That's a nice little connector here. Uh, over here, I believe it's for the little lights. Uh, get to it here. Just got to be very careful. And with these older models, you definitely need to be very careful. The plastic is brittle. Alrighty. And now, you can just slightly go ahead and turn this thing apart. And just be very careful taking it apart. Alright. And there you go. Very, very easy, actually, for how small this model is. I thought it would be a lot more complicated to take apart. And then here is just the baseboard of what it looks like without that. And this will actually come right out. So we'll go ahead and take the memory out here just to show you what the memory looks like. So that is the memory protege add-on. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Let's see if I can show you. Right there. Actually, I'm going to point with this is a soldering piece that you have to do on this particular model or this particular RAM for the Protege to get it to actually function with 64 megs. So this adds an additional 64 megs to the device um, on top of the 32 that's built into the main board. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the main board now. Again, be very careful. I am. I do have a wristband around my ankle just to keep the static at bay. My my table and where I live, it doesn't have a lot of static here. So, uh, but I am placing the main board not on the table. Just around here. So your hard drive goes right here. Here's your PC CMIA. There's your dock on the back end. Um, got your capacitors. I've actually had to replace a capacitor on here as well. Um, but um, the, actually, the original capacitors were in really good shape. I hadn't had any issues with them. So here's a CMOS battery that I actually had to rewire and get a new one. So the old CMOS battery went bad. Um, I believe it's rechargeable, um, where you plug it in and it actually charges a CMOS battery. Uh, don't quote me on that. I think it is rechargeable, though, if I remember correctly. Um, one thing, though, with that Protege memory, and I'll go ahead and show you here, is where it sits right here. If you take this off, there's actually a little stub here um, where usually the CMOS battery would plug into. But by having this, it covers that plug up where you're not able to plug in the CMOS battery. So you actually have to take the stub off and do a little bit of soldering there. Um, as extra precaution, I have definitely put electrical tape around everything just to make sure it doesn't you know, nothing shorts out. But I had to do a little bit of soldering and I got a new CMOS battery actually at a uh, local electronics store. Okay, let's go ahead and take off the heat spreader. I've already done the pre-work of the magic with YouTube. Um, so I'll go ahead and remove this. Um, prior to this video, when I first rebuilt this model, I did add a lot of thermal paste to certain areas that I knew get really got hot on, on this particular model. Um, so you will we'll see some thermal paste. Um, what I plan to do is give you guys a picture um, and an overview and talk about each component. Uh, but just to kind of show you what it looks like without the heat spreader and just the general components here there's your video card there's your cpu and under actually this little tape kind of heat spreader is actually the custom chipset uh, for the toshiba now let's get into the actual component overview for this part of the video i will show a series of slides of the various components that are on the libretto mainboard I've also labeled them 1 through 14. For the first component, we'll be looking at the CPU, which is kind of located toward the top right of the main board, looking down at it. The CPU is an Intel Mobile Pentium processor featuring MMX technology. The microarchitecture is a P5 or 32-bit processor. The speed for the 1 110 libretto is 233 megahertz featuring a 66 megahertz front side bus with 32 kilobytes of l1 cache the clock multiplier is at 3.5 and the v core is running at 1.9 volts for our second and third component we are looking at the chipsets uh, which is a north bridge and south bridge uh, this chipset is a toshiba 
TC203 series, which is very similar to the 430TX chipset from Intel. Uh, these chipsets normally run at 3.3 volts. They feature a PCI bus with the PCI, PCI 2.0 standards. More information uh, is below in the link. For our next component, we are looking at the video card, which is a NeoMagic Magic Graph 128XD, or an N2160B. The GPU speed is 66 megahertz with two megs of DRAM built into the controller at a 64-bit architecture. The bus is a PCI bus, uh, and the chip came out around 1996. As mentioned earlier, there is no 3D or OpenGL support or 3D acceleration available with this particular video card. The fifth component is a Yamaha OPL-SA3. This was a sound card designed to be plug and play by Yamaha to fulfill the PC95 requirements. The OPL-SA3 features a full 16-bit decoding system and features enhanced power management and 3D sound support. This is pretty much the closest you can get to a real sound blaster with these little small retro models, uh, especially for the librettos. The sixth component I really couldn't identify, but I've, I've found with research this is a PCC MIA basically a controller of some sort. Uh, I do have the part number below listed in this video. For the seventh and eighth component, again, I'm unable to identify what these particular two chips do, but I have posted up the actual chip numbers and part numbers from Toshiba. If you have any information, let me know and I will update the video um, regarding these two components. The ninth component is a sensor amplifier made by Mitsumi. Part number is M911MM1089. This controls the battery charge, discharge, and current detection of what the battery state is. Uh, also allows the speaker to have some type of, uh, I guess, speaker type amp uh, to provide sound. The tenth component is a clock synthesizer which basically controls and regulates power and speed of the processor uh, along with the USB and infrared systems. For our next component, this is a power supply controller made by Maxim. It controls the power for the PCM CIA slots, the dual slots that are included on the, uh, on the Libretto 110CT. It also controls the flow uh, of the power for the memory and the other peripherals being attached to the device. On the bottom of the main board for the Libretto 110CT, this is the BIOS. This is a 4 bit flashable BIOS made by ST. Coming up to our 13th component, this is actually the RAM that's included on the main board, which is for the Libretto 110CT is actually 32 megabytes. This RAM is actually made by NEC. For our final component, which is above the BIOS on the back side of the Libretto 110CT motherboard, uh, this is a bus slash docking switch, um, which from what I gathered is a, it's basically a two-port switch and which controls all the docking features for the different the two different docks. You got that little small dock and then you have the extended dock, uh, which is made by Paragon. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for the teardown guide. Look forward to making a few other videos in the near future.